it's Allison from Dreamweaver Designs and today on Thinking Outside the Box I'm going to show you how I created this double-sided polymer clay framed pendant. It has a nice white frame and I've even created the bail with polymer clay so you can slip a cord through there and have yourself a really cool pendant that will go with any outfit of your choosing since you have two different colors and it's just really fun to make and really bright and cheerful perfect for summer so I'm gonna go ahead and set up supplies needed and I'll be back the supplies needed to create the pendant that I showed you at the beginning of this tutorial are these very inexpensive chalk pastels. This is Artist Loft and I believe I got that from Michaels. I'll have a link to everything in the description below this video. So if you're interested in purchasing the supplies, I'll have the whole list there. So the chalk pastels, you're gonna need a clay blade you're going to need a stamp of your choice, and this is a Studio Light Boho Chic, very large stamp. Um, has a nice deep etching, very beautiful stamp. You're going to need cutters of your choice, and these are from the Heart Supplies, which is formerly known as RJ Crafts. They are back at From the Heart Supplies. I'll have a link to those. I use poly paste, but you can also use liquid polymer clay. You're going to need a brush. This is a really nice e.l.f. makeup brush. This is the eye crease brush. A toothpick. This is a special setup um, with magnets. It's two razor blades, and this is available at From the Heart Supplies, and I'll show you how I use that. You're going to need like an X-Acto knife. This is Varathane, which is a water-based uh, finish, and it is the gloss. I just put it in these ball jars when I buy it so that it lasts longer, doesn't dry out as quick. I used white Primo Sculpey polymer clay and this is the texture sheet that From the Heart Supplies offers. Gonna need that. And this is just clear packing tape. Um, doesn't matter what brand you use, you just wanna use some clear tape. And I use the packing tape because it's wide. So I'm gonna go ahead and get set up and I'll be back. I have conditioned my polymer clay and rolled it out to a number four on my pasta machine. Number one is the thickest setting. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I don't want to waste clay. We're going to be coloring this and it's not really wasting, but if you want your clay to be nice and white for another project, then it won't be once we're finished with this next step. So I want to save as much of the white as I can to keep it a pure white. So I just, you know, used my cutter as a guide. So the first thing we need to do is we need to colorize our pieces. And we'll go ahead and get our chalk out. And this is not sidewalk chalk. This is chalk pet artist chalks. They're an inexpensive set. Um, the more expensive set have like a more pigment in them or whatever, but I have found that these work just fine. And the colors that I'm going to use are this pink, yellow, and orange for one side of the pendant. And then this turquoise, this purple, and this blue for the other side. All right, so the first step is to colorize our back piece. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and put that down. Go ahead and get your X-Acto knife. And let me put these off to the side. We'll work with the blue side first. We are going to shave. I want purple to be my top color, so we're gonna keep that one out. But we're gonna shave a little bit of this turquoise. And I like to take my knife and just go up and down rather than just shaving like that because you want a fine powder. And I have found that if you lightly put your blade on there and just scrape up and down, you're gonna get a fine powder. Whereas this way you could, you know, take off a bigger chunk of it. So just lightly up and down and get some of that blue out onto the mat. And in this area, we'll do the same with this darker blue. And I'll probably need more, but we'll start with that. So you just take your finger, dab it into your chalk, and just start putting it on the clay wherever you want to put it. So we're just adding color to the background. And I want a little more turquoise on here because I really like that color. And you can put it on as light or as dark as you want. And I'm just lightly burnishing that into the clay. Now we're gonna take our stamp and we're gonna figure out where on the stamp we want our pendant to look or what area of the stamp. And I really like that area there. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip it over and I know that I'm using that as the top and take our clay and place it onto the stamp so that we're getting it in all the area that we want to stamp. And you don't need to use any release on the stamp because your chalk is actually gonna be your release. So I'm gonna put that down on my mat and then I'm gonna take my and then just push with my fingers. That was an acrylic block that I used to help push down. You want to get a pretty deep impression. So I think I've got it all and that looks good. That's, that's a nice deep impression. You just pull it up and this is what you've got. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put that on my tile and we'll go ahead and do the yellow or the, the other colors. Let me just clean that up. and dry it off. And now we're gonna do the same with our other set of colors. And I want pink to be my top color. So I'm gonna put that off to the side and work with the yellow and the orange.
clean our mess up. All right, so we're gonna be working next with the purple and the blue, so we can put those off to the side. I mean, the purple and the pink. All right, now is when we get our tape out. And we are going to be taking the top the raised areas, we're gonna try and get as much color off of those as we can. So just lay your tape down and lightly go over those top areas. And pull your tape up. Make sure that's stuck down good, otherwise it's gonna come up. And you just keep doing that rubbing all those raised areas until you get as much of the color off as you want. Get some more tape. You can actually, that one got messed up, but you can actually save that tape if you're like a scrapbooker and you can put it in a journal because you'll have that um, picture on there. I'll show you with the blue one. I didn't do it with this one. But if you see, it leaves that impression of the image. So you just do this until you get most of that top color off. And I'm doing this very, very lightly because I don't want to lose the impression of my image. I want to keep that texture on there. And we'll do one more time over here. Get a new piece of tape and do the blue one. All right, that looks good. So we'll do this one. Actually, we'll do the yellow first. And for that, I'm gonna use the pink. Make sure I'm still in shot. And we're just gonna scrape off some of our pink. And take your finger, dab it in the chalk and lightly rub over the raised areas. If you get some down in the other areas, that's fine. Like right there, that's fine. Don't worry about it. I'm going to show you in a minute. Some of it will stay, but it gives it a really nice effect. So we're just getting all the raised areas and adding pink to them. And you can go as dark as you want with the pink. Now, see how these areas here I got down in there? Just take your brush and lightly brush. And not all of it will come out, but most of it will. And I don't mind that some of that pink stays down in there because it, it gives it a really nice effect. So I'm gonna go over a little more pink. I want it just a little darker. Because when we took the brush to it, it, um, it took away some of the pink. 
and take your brush again. And just a little more pink. This area there. And those. Now here's where you can take a piece of paper or you can take a piece of deli wrap and I want to burnish, not hard, just lightly, I'm going to burnish the color into the clay. So very softly, that's what I'm doing. Just burnishing that pink. onto the clay. And then if you got some in areas that you don't want, you can take your brush and get it out of those without losing very much of the pink that you have. So we're gonna do the same thing over here with the blue. Now we are going to cut our shapes out. So you're just gonna wanna line it up to where you want it. So to me, that looks pretty good. Just set it down and take my acrylic block and push the cutter down. And then I just wiggle it a little bit. And we'll do the same for the other one. Line it up where you like it. That looks good to me. Set it down. Cut your shape, wiggle just a little. And now you just simply pull your clay up and you have your two shapes. This is a wonderful veneer that you can use for other things. So if you wanna save it, I suggest saving it. Um, you could cut pieces out and roll beads with it or whatever. So, and if you don't, you can just put it into your scrap pile. All right, so we are going to go ahead and bake these at 275. This is Primo Sculpey. You would, um, depending on what clay you use, you wanna follow the package instructions. But I like to bake this at 275 for 60 minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and I'll be back. All right, our pieces are out of the oven and they are fully cooled. You are going to leave them on the tile for this next step. And all I'm gonna do is add a thin layer, a thin coating of erythane, if I can get the lid off. 
and I need to stir this because I haven't used it for a few days. And what I like to do is I just take the end of my brush, the handle part, and stir. You don't want to shake this because you don't want to get bubbles in it. So you just lightly stir and then I get the excess off the handle and then simply take a paper towel and wipe my brush off. All right, so we are going to do a very thin layer. And what this is gonna do is it's going to lock in the chalk pastels. So very thin. And you'll notice as you put the varathane on that your colors will be a little more brilliant. So I'm brushing it on very lightly using a clean brush, making sure that, you know, if you use the brush that you wipe the chalk off with, make sure you brush your, or clean your brush really good. Otherwise you'll be putting that color onto there where you don't want it. And I'm making sure that it's getting down into the crevices as well. And it uh, just perked that pink up. Going along the edge. And you don't want to put too thick of a layer on um, because you don't, it may dry not clear. It might be, you know, kind of foggy. So we'll go ahead and do this one as well. All right, now we want to let this dry. And it doesn't take long. Give it about 15 minutes to dry. And then we are gonna put this back, once it's dry, we're gonna put it back in the oven at 200 degrees for 10 minutes. And that is going to help set that varathane. So I'm gonna go ahead, let this dry, put it in the oven, and then I'll be back when it's fully cooled. These are now out of the oven and fully cured and cooled. So now's the time we're gonna take them off the tile and we're gonna clean up our edges. And to do this, I simply take my fingernail. You could also take a nail file, but I find that this is the easiest because it's just gonna get up that little bit of clay that um, from the cutter that was actually attached to the tile. And we'll do the same for this one. And see how easily that comes off? It's just so easy to just scrape off with your fingernail. And if you want to use a nail file, that's fine. You can do that. I just find this to be easier. All right. All right, so the next step is we are going to affix these two pieces together. And to do that, we are going to get out our poly paste and a baby light to wipe my fingers off with. And I'm just putting a little bit on my finger and we're gonna rub it onto the back of the pieces. Very light layer. And this will help them adhere to each other. And I'm gonna 
to do that same thing for this one. Just a little bit on my finger and rub it onto the back. Nice and even. And wipe my fingers off so I don't get it on the front of the pieces. And now we're just gonna take these two pieces and put them back to back, line them up, So you're lining them up as even as you can. And what I usually like to do is put a finger down at the bottom and the top and then go along the sides to make sure that they're even. So you now have them back to back and everything is even. You're gonna place that onto a tile. And I chose another one because it's clean. And you are going to bake this in the oven at 275 for 15 minutes. And I'll be back. This is now out of the oven and it is still cooling off. So we're gonna put this aside and work on our next step. And the next step is I rolled out a sheet of white on a number four setting and I'm gonna go ahead and put it on a fresh tile and we're gonna put it long way and I'm just gonna slice it off here and here and first we're going to put a bit of texture on here and again we're going to take this texture sheet and you don't have to do the whole um, piece we're just going to be using the middle part of it and we're going to be getting a strip out of the middle so we don't need the whole sheet to be textured and that looks good so I'm going to pick it up, put it back on my tile. And what we are going to do is take this tool here, which is two razors. And I'm going to try and do this without cutting myself. These are magnets that hold these two. Well, shouldn't have taken apart, but they're two razors that are held together with uh, magnets and you can change the thickness setting on them by stacking the magnets and the thickness set setting for these happens to be two magnets thick and I'll show you real quick if you look at the side of this, you'll see that it's the same width. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut with the edges here and these will stay together with the magnets and you don't have to cut a perfectly straight line and I'm going straight down the middle. So I can pull up each side now and I have a perfect strip. And like I said, it doesn't need to be perfectly straight because we are going to be using that around the edges. The next step is you want to take a little piece of clay. We're going to go ahead and make our bale. So let me put this off to the side and zoom in a little. And I'm just taking like a a pea size amount of clay. I mean, that would be a pretty good size pea. So let's take a little bit off of there. And 
I'm rolling it into like a little bit of a tube shape. And then I'm gonna take my toothpick and I, let me go down on the table for this. I'm gonna put my piece here and I'm gonna line my toothpick up to the center as much as I can and push it through. And now it looks like a bead. I've pierced it. So now I'm just gonna roll with a little bit of pressure and even and turn that into a tube. So now we have a tube. And I am going to get my uh, texture sheet out and I'm lightly, so I'm not changing the shape of the tube, pushing some texture into it. And then that way it'll match our edges. And lightly roll again. If you lost any kind of your shape. And put some texture back into it where I rolled and touched it with my fingers. All right, so now we have what's a tube and we want to cut this shape down so it's maybe about that long because this is gonna be our bale. So all you do is take your blade, I'm gonna make sure I'm in camera shot, you take your blade and put it straight down in one spot and turn. And you cut off that end And if it's not perfect, which that's not, I wanna go and, and do it again, because I want it to be straight. So I'm gonna take a little bit off to get it more straight. Okay. And we can take our blade and smooth that out. Or whatever other tool that you have. And then I'm gonna do the same for this side because I don't need it to be that big. So I'm just gonna kinda eyeball it, turn. And pull that off and then I'll flatten that edge with my blade, anything that's sticking out. And now I wanna make this hole just a little bit bigger. So I'm just gonna take my toothpick while I'm holding it and just kind of run it around in the hole. And then from the other end, I wanna do the same thing. Cause you want a big enough hole where you're gonna be able to put rope, you know, a piece of rope or a piece of leather or a small piece of chain. You want it to be able to be big enough to get in there. And you want both ends to be the same. So let me do this one a little more. And then you can use a tool or the edge of your blade just to kind of smooth out any rough edges you might have. All right, I'm gonna put this back on my toothpick and I need to give it a little bit more texture because we lost some of that texture. And we wanna do this very lightly because we don't want to lose our shape. So I'm just pushing on it lightly while turning the toothpick and getting texture all the way around. So we're gonna put that off to the side. 
clean up our little pieces of clay. And now we're gonna take our piece. It is fully cooled now. And as you can see, these are completely stuck together. We're gonna take a little bit of our poly paste and we're gonna wipe that around the edges. You can use a brush for this or you can use a uh, fingertip. I'm gonna use my pinky since it's my smallest finger. And I'm just gonna apply it to the edges all the way around. And that's gonna help our uh, clay that we made for the edge, it's gonna help it stick better. So wipe my fingers off. All right, now we're gonna take our piece of clay that we cut out into a strip. And I wanna make sure that this edge here is um, even and straight. So I'm just going to cut a little, little piece off of it. Then take your strip and starting in the middle, you're going to do it all the way around the edge. sticking it to the edge of your piece all the way around. And that poly clay is thick, so it really helps hold this clay into place as I do this. You could use liquid polymer clay also. Right now we're just sticking it all along the edge and we'll line it up better as we progress to the next step. I've got cat hair on my fingers. And we're gonna get to the point where we started, which is right there, and just simply take your blade and cut. Pull that away and then you'll have, I always like to cut a little over, so I'm gonna have a little piece there. I'm just gonna get rid of it and then our pieces will line up perfectly. All right, so let's get that out of the way. Now we have our edge on. And this is where we come in and fine tune the edge. And looky there, another piece of cat hair. Never fails. I don't even have cats in the studio and I've got cat fur or dog fur on everything. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is just smooth this edge out. You're not even gonna see it, but I like to smooth it anyway. And you're gonna wanna keep going back and forth from the front, you know, from each side to look at it to make sure that it's even. And now we're gonna take our texture and we're gonna start pushing it lightly all along the edge, the outer edge. So it's helping it push into the clay piece that has the poly clay on it to help it stick better. And you're putting that texture back that may have come off uh, when we put this on there. All right, now I'm gonna turn it over and make sure that I haven't 
gotten anything out of place on this side since I was working on the other. And now we're gonna take our texture and we are going to do it along the edges in the front. So what I'm kind of doing is pushing just right on top there very lightly. I'm hitting this edge and the front because I want all of that to have texture. And I'm doing it very lightly because I don't want to be pushing this around where it um, is going to move the, all the clay to the back if you, or to the other side. So I'm just doing it softly, pushing the texture in and kind of getting it on the, the very front of this strip that we laid down. And I hope all that was in camera shot. I'm going to bring it a little closer. So I'm just pushing the edge where it's kind of going to go up and over just a little bit of our already cured clay piece. And you're just doing it very lightly. Now we're gonna do the same thing with this side. And if it gets a little out of skew, that's fine. We can fix that. Right now you're just getting that texture in there. Just very lightly putting the texture in. Look at your other side. And if you see something you wanna fix, you can push it up with your nail for now. And you're just going to fine tune this until you're happy with it. Turn it over, fine tooth here. Now, if you have a piece that you're not happy with, you can try and push it up with your nail, or you can take your blade and do it that way, just to kind of even this out. Um, but, you know, it's, it's how you want to do it. It doesn't have to be totally even on both sides, but sometimes I tend to be a bit of a perfectionist. But it's also nice for it to have a little bit of an organic look because this is this kind of reminds me of the beach. The white reminds me of a white sand at the beach. And just that summery feeling. All right, I think I'm pretty happy with that. Now we are going to put our bale on. And let me zoom in a little more so I can sit down to do this. We're gonna take our bale and you're gonna find center. And just give it a little push. You're just pushing down a little bit with your toothpick. And then come to the edge. You're gonna come to the edge and just push down a little. Come to the other edge. And that doesn't quite look center. And we're gonna push down and I'm just taking the toothpick on the very edge and then I'm gonna go inside and push a little. 
Now this might skew that out, which you can just fix. And you wanna make sure you're keeping your round shape inside, so go with the toothpick. And I am a little off center, but that's okay. We can fix that. There. That looks better. And I'm just making sure when you're pushing down you're doing it lightly and you're pushing it into that other clay so it's really gonna adhere when you bake it. You don't have to worry about it coming apart. And that's why I'm going in and pushing in the middle too. All right, so now just go around your piece, make sure you're happy with it. If you need to touch up any spots, um, like here, I kind of want to touch up a little with the texture sheet push that up a little Oop, off camera push that up a little touch it up and make sure the other side looks good too so you have a nice hole and it's uniform and if you got any clay on your baked clay, you can just move it off of there. And there it is. So we're gonna wanna put this on a clean tile, which I have right here. And I need my, here, they're right here. I took four, or I took one index card and I cut it up into four pieces. And I am going to lay that there because I don't want my bale laying directly onto the tile because it might distort it. See if I can show you from the side. See, it's barely touching the tile. And those index cards are keeping it up just enough where it's not completely touching. So you're gonna put this in your oven at 275 for one hour. And I will be back when this is fully cured and cooled. Our piece is out of the oven and it is fully cured and cooled off. And this is how it looks. So the very last step is we want to put a coat of our Varathane over this to protect it. I also put, I do two coats over the colored pieces are colored parts and then I do one coat over the white just to protect it to stay white. So let me get my Varathane out. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the edges And I like to get a little bit in there. And I'm just dabbing the tip of my brush into the Varathane. And I'm gonna hit all the edges. And like I said, the edges are only gonna get one coat, whereas the um, colored part, the design part is gonna get two. So the edge, um, having just one coat on it, won't be as shiny. And that's the look that I'm going for. I don't want it to be as shiny. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this whole bale because when I place it down on the tile to dry, I'm gonna hang it over the edge. So let's do this side first. And like I said, I'm just putting the very tip of my brush into my varnish, into my Varathane, and putting a light coat onto the piece. 
where I don't want it to pool up in the recessed areas, but I wanna make sure it gets down in them too. And I really love these brushes because they're so soft and the bristles stay, they don't come out. Um, these brushes last for a long time. And now I'm gonna let that dry. Then I will do the other side and I will add uh, one more coat to both of the design sides. And when I'm finished, I'll come back and we'll see the finished product. And here is the finished piece. Two coats of varnish on the design sides and one coat of the Verathane varnish on the edges. And I realized that I had made this one actually a little bit smaller. This is the one we created in the tutorial and this is the one I created before the tutorial. And it's just slightly smaller. This is slightly darker. And those look about the same. This is just a little bit darker. So there's really not much variation. Anywho, I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope that you found it helpful. If you liked it, please like this video, subscribe to my channel, and leave a nice comment. Until next time, have a great weekend. And everybody, please stay safe and healthy. I'll see you next time. Bye.